Hey guys, Cord Gray here, back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at Android 11 for the Samsung Galaxy S20. So, Samsung just released their, not beta, but normal version of Android 11, or One UI 3.0, onto the Samsung Galaxy S20 line of phones. So the S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra will all be getting this update around this time. Uh, my Galaxy S20 just got the Android 11 update. So we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 new features with Android 11. So number one, let's take a look at probably the biggest change with One UI 3 or Android 11. Uh, if you pull down the notification center, you get this kind of see-through page now. Um, and it, it comes down a little bit differently. So as you can see, it comes down in a smoother manner. Uh, so this is what notifications will look like. They're split up now. So you have alerting notifications, you have silent notifications, and you also have conversation notifications. So they're split up into these little little sections. Um, I can't say that I like this, but, you know, it's new. Another thing is if we clear all these notifications, um, we can see that it's see-through. So you can see your background. There's no longer a white or back black background. It's now see-through totally, and you can still swipe down to see your stuff. So one thing I don't like is the fact that the setting power and other little menu buttons are at the top. They used to be here, and Samsung moved them up to the top. Now, this isn't really a problem for me, but for people who use a Note 20 or a Galaxy S20 Ultra, this may be a problem because it's a bit of a reach to reach these things. So the next feature is really, they kind of redesigned the settings menu. Now it looks the same, but we have different fonts and different icons. So it might not look a bit different, but it's a little different when we have different uh, fonts and whatnot. Um, and it's kind of laid out in a different manner, but all in all, it looks about the same. Now in display settings, if we go to screen resolution, you get a new screen here, which I think looks a lot better then the old one, it kind of explains what it does a lot better. See, if you look at the HD+, Plus, it's a lot pixelated. And then the Full HD, it's less pixelated. And then for the WQHD+, Plus, it's not. I think for somebody who doesn't know much about this, this is a better way to explain what it is than the last version. Another change they made was in notifications. So now you have two options if you open up the notification setting. You have detailed or brief. If you go to brief, this is where the new edge lighting is. So Samsung has basically removed edge lighting and kind of hit it in the settings. So you, you're going to have to use brief notifications to get your edge lighting. Detail does not give you this setting. So you're going to want to use brief and go to brief pop-up setting and then tap edge lighting. And then you get your edge lighting settings. So I don't know why Samsung did that. Um... I can't figure it out, but now edge lighting is in this setting. Another change is if you go to advanced settings, you can now see your notification history. So we just cleared, there's nothing here as you can see, and you can see recently dismissed notifications. And you can see in the last 24 hours, all your notifications. So you can turn this on and off and uh, yeah. So if you missed a notification, you can go back to notification history and check it out. So Samsung also did change the weather um, widget. Now, it's probably not a big change and most people won't notice it, but there is a different weather icon. So for the widget, it's going to look a little bit different. Next, they did change the volume slider. So now this is the new volume slider. It comes in from the side. Um, and I can't tell you I like this or not. I kind of prefer the top one. But hey, it is what it is. I like this. You tap the three dots and you get all your volume. Now, again, I'm not a big fan of this. Um, I don't know. I just don't think it's user friendly. But hey, this is the new change they made. So let's take a look at some new changes on the lock screen itself. Now, this is the new lock screen. Now, the clock and the date and time are kind of moved down farther down than they used to be. Now, they used to be like right about right here. So Samsung moved them down. Um, I don't know why, but hey, they moved it down. And we also have a new fingerprint scanner animation for phones with fingerprints. So let me stop scanning my face here. And you can see 
there is a new fingerprint scanner icon. Um, and you know what? I kind of like it. All right. Some people say they don't like it. I kind of like it. Now, the animation for unlocking is about the same. So there is no new animation. It will still make that uh, animation. But the icon is different, which I kind of like. Back so another the change video. with the One UI Samsung 3 update Q8 is now, usually when you exit uh, out, your video will continue to play. But and, uh, now, yeah, if you take your finger and you take a corner, you so can now expand the video to make it a lot bigger, which Samsung I think is a great idea. Another difference is the new update to always on display. Um, So now the clock and the date and time are now separated from the battery percentage. Um, so now the, your battery percentage will be at the bottom here, and then your time and date will be at the top. Now, I can't, I don't know, again, I don't know why Samsung did that. Back, you know, if you remember, your percentage used to be up at the top, and now they changed that. Um, and the reason why I don't like this is the fact that the percentage never lines up with the always-on display. It kind of looks kind of weird to me, the fact that the, the percentage will move around this display separated from this. So as you can see, the always on display is to the left, but this is more to the, the center to the right. So is what it is. I guess I'll get used to it, but this is another change they made. And some small change, they made folders a bit wider, like the, the gaps in between the apps. And I really don't like this. Like I really don't, but hey, it is what it is. But the gaps in between the apps are now larger. Next change they made, if you go to the phone dialer and tap the three dots here and go to settings, you can now set a call background video. So if you tap call background, you can reconfigure this. So now you can change the layout so you can have name and the number here, or you can do it like this. Another thing you can do is now have a video background for somebody calling. Now in the background settings, you'll see the default video, which is just the default. But if you hit the plus icon, you will now be able to set a video from your camera roll as your caller ID background. So let me talk real for real about this update for a minute. Uh, this app, GoodLock, I'm probably going to make a YouTube video by itself about this app, GoodLock, made by Samsung. So if we go into GoodLock... This is where you can redesign your Galaxy and customize a lot of things. But the problem I'm having is now I get this warning saying that this app version is not compatible with uh, Android 11. Now, you're probably saying, oh, just update it from the store, right? So if I go to the Galaxy store, which is where you uh, update these applications, right? If I go to updates, you can see that there are no updates, right? And if we go to the Play Store here, and we look up my games and apps updates. There are no updates. Well, some updates for some apps, but it doesn't pull up. You know what I'm saying? So for good luck. And also, if I go to the Galaxy store real quick and I look up always on display. Right. So this is Samsung's always on display. It does not have an update for me. Right. So people in the um reviews are all saying the same thing that there are no updates for this um samsung please send out updates to make these apps compatible with your new operating system like i, I prefer to actually be able to use some samsung apps to work with my samsung phone you know what i'm saying so that's one thing that irritate me is the fact that certain applications from samsung do not work with android 11 which I can't understand why, because One UI 3 is their own software. So why, why does, I, I, don't, I don't get it, but that's one thing to look out for. So with that being said, that's about it. Now, of course, there's more to it. There's definitely more uh, performance enhancements and stuff. But this was just basically the top 10 features, the biggest features of One UI 3. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and peace out.